Hello again everybody and welcome back to another edition of On the Range in the A10C Warthog. And I'm going to continue looking at the AGM-65 Maverick and in this video focus on the controls that are used to slew the Maverick into the target area, acquire a lock, stabilize the missile, and do anything that we need to do control-wise to help us get the missile onto a target. So the current setup that I have things in right now is that my HUD is my sensor of interest. I have my Dismiss code up on my left display and the Maverick code up on my right display. So this is just a basic setup that I'm beginning with. My master arm switch is already set to arm, so I've already done a lot of the setup work. Now I guess the first control that generally you'll use in the entire sequence of selecting and employing a Maverick is going to be the, it can be, the DMS, data management switch right there on my throttle. Now, the use that you get out of this when it comes to the Maverick is selecting the Maverick profile on the Dismiss. So, if I go DMS right or DMS left, it's going to cycle through different profiles that I have already preloaded. So, I simply need to cycle through until my Maverick profile is selected. And you can see that on my Dismiss, by doing that, it has selected both Mavericks that I have on stations 3 and 9. Okay, so that gets us to that point and gets us with the setup with the Maverick profile selected. Now let me show you one more function right here. With my HUD as a sensor of interest and with the Maverick profile selected, all that I need to do to call up the Maverick display and to simultaneously make the Maverick my sensor of interest is go to my right throttle and my China hat, the bottom red switch. And this only works with the HUD as sensor of interest, and it only works with the Maverick profile called up. But if I go China Hat forward short, it automatically brings up my Maverick display and makes the Maverick sensor of interest. So that's just a quick and dirty way of calling up the Maverick if you don't want to take your hand off the throttle and stick and you know, select the OSB next to the next to a Mav and depress it twice to make it sensor of interest that way. So that's just one more technique that you, that you can use. So at this point, with the Maverick sensor of interest, now all of the other uh, cockpit controls uh, start to work and start to affect the Maverick. And I'll come back around and get pointed back at the general target area that I have in mind. And I'll start going through these controls one by one. Morning, autopilot. Okay, that's better. So the most common control that you're going to use when it comes to employing the Maverick is the slew control. That's what you'll use to slew the seeker head around and to find and acquire targets in the Maverick display. The slew control is on the right throttle. It is the left hand switch on the forward part of the right throttle. And you simply move it left, right, up, down. Or, you know, if you don't have a throttle you just map it to some kind of a hat on your whatever type of throttle that you have or you can also use keyboard commands but it's just slews the left right up down and allows you to control where the seeker head is pointing on the Maverick so I'll just slew it off the bore side real quick and come over to the next switch and that's the China hat that's the bottom red switch on the right throttle now this has a lot of uh, a lot of functions, three functions that we're worried about for the Maverick. If I go China Hat aft short, it recages the Maverick Seeker, and I'll demonstrate that one more time. I'm using the slew control to take the Seeker over off bore side and look for a target. But say we want to return the Maverick Seeker to the bore side position, I go China Hat aft short, and it returns it to the bore side. Okay, the other function that it has is China Hat Forward Short, and we already saw it do one function with the HUD as sensor of interest. China Hat Short Fort Forward Short with the HUD as sensor of interest calls up the Maverick display and makes it sensor of interest. Uh, but with the Maverick as sensor of interest, China Hat Forward Short is going to switch between narrow and wide field of view. So I have. Two, two options here. One is with the seeker zoomed all the way out, which you can see right now, that's in the wide field of view. If I go China Hat forward short, it cycles between 
wide field of view and narrow field of view. So it's just a toggle between wide and narrow. Now the other function that the China hat gives us with the Maverick is the ability to have the Maverick Seeker slave over to our current sensor point of interest. Now in this case we just happen to have steer point 3 set up as our sensor point of interest. And if I wanted to save myself some time and if I were in a situation like now where I have targets out near a known point that I can make a SPI sensor point of interest, all I have to do is go China hat forward long and that's going to automatically slave the seeker over to your current speed. So China Hat Forward Long slaves the seeker over to my current speed, which happened to be that steer point in that case. And it saved me a lot of trouble when it, when it came to slewing the seeker over. I didn't have to use the slew controls at all. I just slaved it right on over. Okay, so the next feature on the throttle is the boat switch and that's the second switch from the bottom it's a three position toggle switch or I'm sorry it's a three position oh what kind of a switch is that that stays in a position it's not a toggle but it's a three position switch so the positions that you're normally going to worry about is aft are aft and forward but it does have three positions so let me describe what the three positions do and I will Recage my seeker. That switch has a different function depending on the model of AGM-65 that you have selected. Right now I have an AGM-65D called up and this is an imaging infrared type of seeker. Now in the aft position, and I'm talking a real A10 here, it's slightly different in the BCS, but in the aft position it's going to have the seeker look for hot targets on a, it's going to put hot look for hot targets on a cold background in the act position. If I put it at the forward position, it's going to look for cold targets on a hot background. But in the DCS A10C, you can imagine that it does the same thing, but all, the, all in the world that it really does is change the symbology on the display from white to black. Uh, the rest of it is just kind of left to your imagination. Not that it really matters to, to begin with, but that's what that switch does. Now it does have a center position that depending on the type of missile that you have selected uh, could be useful for you. In the D model, the center position is going to... And I'll just slave it back over to my speed real quick so I can lock a target briefly. The center position is going to allow you to adjust the bore side on the missile. So if I were... If I wanted to adjust the bore sight, I could do that by putting it into the center position and I'll lock a target here, attempt to lock a target here uh, briefly just to demonstrate uh, how this works. So I put it in the center position and you can see the seeker bore side comes up. Now all I have to do now is go TMS forward short and it's going to update the bore side position so that that is the new bore side wherever it happens to be pointing at the time. And I'll get into a, a video on that at a later time. That might be the last one that I do because you'll never really do that. The Seeker is already pre bore sighted for you every single time in a pretty good position on the HUD as well. So that's really it for the throttle controls. Now let me switch over to the stick and go over the controls that we deal with here. Now we already saw uh, initially in the video that I used the DMS, the data management switch right here, the right bottom switch on the throttle. With my HUD as sensor of interest I cycle it left and right to uh, call up the Maverick profile. Now additionally we have the TMS the target management switch. That's the bottom left switch right there on the front of the or the uh, part of the stick that's facing you at least. And this has a couple of different functions on the HM65. Now let me come around and get into an area that I'm looking at a target and the first function that I'll show, I'll show the space stabilize function. And this is going to be TMS left long. And if I, uh, if I just kind of fly the, the seeker out to a general location and go TMS left long, that's going to space stabilize the missile so that now I can still move the aircraft around and fly the aircraft around. But the seeker is going to be space stabilized out there looking at a point at a, a certain distance in front of the missile and stabilized in the right general area. 
So from there, I can then slew the missile around using the slew controls on my left throttle and really start to, in detail, look for targets. And then, after that, once I release the slew controls, it automatically, after about a second after releasing the slew controls, re-space stabilizes. So really, you'll never... It really isn't that useful to have this switch set up specifically for space stabilized, since all that you have to do to have the aircraft automatically space stabilized for you is slew the seeker, release the slew control, and it sta space stabilizes for you after about a second anyway. Okay, second, we have TMS down short, and let me recage the seeker and come back around and look for a, a target on the ground. Okay, and just like I demonstrated right there, if I just kind of fly the seeker around to a location and then go TMS aft short, now it ground stabilizes, and this is a little bit more useful, uh, I think, than space stabilizing. Because when you space stabilize, it stabilizes on just an arbitrary point out in front of the missile at a certain distance. It really doesn't lock onto a certain location on the ground. If you go ground stabilize, and that was TMS aft short, it stabilizes it on a certain point on the ground. So now when you maneuver the aircraft around, it's going to stay right there at that one point. So then, from there, of course, you can then slew the missile around and attempt to lock a target in the area. Okay, and then the third feature of the TMS is TMS up short. Now this, uh, this part really, uh, really confused me for a while, but I'll, I'll try to make the whole... I'll probably do another video just on techniques for achieving a lock on a uh, target. But... There are two ways to lock a target. One is just to simply slew the seeker over to the location that you want to lock up on. And I'll do that right now just as a demonstration. I'll come around to this tank target that I have out here in the distance. And I'm just going to simply slew the seeker over to the location. I'll go to narrow field of view. Slew it over and I don't have to do anything. I just get into range and it automatically locks a target once it comes into the you know, inside the crosshairs and into the field of view. Now, conversely, if I am in some sort of a stabilized mode, either space stabilized or ground stabilized, you can see that it's not locked up, that if it's in a stabilized configuration, I then need to go TMS forward short to have it achieve lock. So, you know, that's what TMS forward short does. You don't have to do TMS forward short to achieve a lock. You only have to do that if you're like say space stabilized over a a target area or over a target and then if you if it doesn't automatically lock it up for you then go TMS forward short so depending on the technique that you're using you will or will not need to do that in the first place and I'll get into techniques on a later video and let's see here and of course the last uh, I guess control that really matters is your weapons release switch or weapons, weapons release button. That's the red switch right there on the the uh, stick facing you. And you depress and hold that switch to fire the missile once you have achieved a lock. So folks, that's about all I have to cover this time around. And those are the HOTAS controls that are used to control the AGM-65. So just a quick recap of everything that we went over. On my right throttle, I have the slew control to slew the seeker over to a different position. I have the boat switch, which is used depending on the position of the switch to... In the DCS A10C, it, uh, in the at position, makes the symbols white. Center position can be used to bore sight the seeker or to put the seeker into a force correlate track mode, which we'll see on a different model of AGM-65 in a later video, or forward position to make the symbols black. I have the China hat, which can uh, slave the seeker over to the current speed. That's trying to have forward long. I can go trying to have forward short to cycle between wide and narrow field of view, or I can go trying to have aft short to uh, bore sight, return the seeker to a bore sight position. And let's see here on the stick, I have the weapons release switch, which is used to release the weapon. I have the DMS data management switch, which with HUD is soy can be used to call up the Maverick profile. I have the TMS. TMS left long is to space stabilize. TMS aft short is to ground stabilize. And TMS forward short is to 
under certain circumstances achieve a lock. So folks, that's all I have to cover today, and I'll get into the displays that are used to uh, give you information on uh, how the missile is doing in a later video. So for now, hey, thanks a lot for watching again, and I will see you next time.